A ruler who lacks understanding is a great oppressor, but he who hates covetousness will prolong his days. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share some thoughts beginning with Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 16. A ruler who lacks understanding is a great oppressor, but he who hates covetousness will prolong his days. These proverbs are attributed to Solomon, and Solomon ruled for 40 years. But when he died, his son Rehoboam took up the throne at the age of 41. So all his life he had lived the privileged life of a prince. The people came to him and said, Your father was a great king, but he has laid a heavy taxation and labour burden upon us. We request that you ease that burden. Rehoboam considered the matter. He consulted the elders who ruled with his father and they agreed with the people. Saying to Rehoboam, If you become their servant now, they will continue to serve you. He consulted the young men who'd grown up with him and they advised, Thus you should speak to this people. My little finger shall be thicker than my father's waist. And now, whereas my father laid a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. And so that's what he said to the people. Increase the taxes, increase the burden, and to make the kingdom even greater. But of course, that would not make the kingdom greater. That destroyed the kingdom. The people revolted. Ten of the twelve tribes left the confederacy to set up the kingdom of Israel and leave the kingdom of Judah. And while he remained as king for 17 years, yet the kingdom was in decline. A ruler who lacks understanding is a great oppressor, but he who hates covetousness will prolong his days. That is, the ruler who sees that his role is to bless the people, to be a servant of the people. In Western countries, influenced by the word of God for a long time, we have that understanding that rulers are there to serve the people. We call them ministers, prime ministers, and minister for this and minister for that. And the word minister means the servant. So they have a role of organising at a high level and doing for the people the things that the people can't do individually. If we need a new road, we can't individually build that road. We need to have an organisation. We need to have a lot of people working together in harmony with plans and with resources. That is why we pay taxes to governments and appoint leaders rulers, ministers, to oversee the governments to provide those services for the community at a society level, which cannot be provided by the individual. But the thing that an individual can do for himself, he should be free to do. So society has always organised itself to have kings and elders and rulers, leaders, the model of having multiple elders in a community has proved well. Many councillors provide for good government. A single man at the top can think of himself more highly than he ought to think and become an oppressor, particularly when he directs his power against a particular group in society. And this happens repeatedly. So at the present time, we have powerful rulers who are seeking to increase their power, particularly in communist countries, who claim there is no God, and yet they make their emperor their God. He demands to be worshipped, he demands to be obeyed. And at the present time, such persecution is largely directed towards those who acknowledge God, Jews and Christians. Recently, the Chinese leader has increased his power within his government. 
and I heard the other day that the Russian president is seeking to do the same thing. Well, of course, the Bible tells us that in the Great Tribulation, there will be a world ruler supported by others. Governments will hand their power over to the Antichrist, who is called the Beast, because of his violence. His oppression will be directed towards those who will not worship him as God. This is not the role that a ruler should take. And so when the Lord Jesus came, he came not to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. And he instructed his disciples that they should have that same attitude. For he made that statement when they were debating who among the twelve would sit beside him in the kingdom. That position is for whom the Father chooses to give it to. But it should not be something that we are seeking after. Rather, we need to recognise those that God has given ability to lead and to appoint them as leaders. And we have the incredible examples of Joseph and of Daniel and of Mordecai, three men, descendants of Abraham, servants of God, first of all, who became the senior advisor in Gentile kingdoms simply because they were men of great understanding. As our proverb says, a ruler who lacks understanding is a great oppressor, but he who hates covetousness will prolong his days. There was no sense of covetousness in them, and so they ruled a long time, in all cases, under an emperor who depended upon them. So we have a ruler who lacks understanding, is a great oppressor, but he who hates covetousness will prolong his days. The New Testament gives us the role of government in Romans chapter 13. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For because of this you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers, attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, Fear to whom fear, honour to whom honour. Now, Paul wrote this in his letter to the Romans. Later, Caesars would rise up who would seek to destroy and persecute the church. And the church responded with humility and continuing to do those things which were good. As Paul had said in the previous chapter, overcome evil with good. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, Live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good.